Wooing His Valentine by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. If I could speak in phrases fine, full sweep the words that I would say to woo you for my Valentine upon this February day. But when I strive to tell you all the charms I see in your dear face, a dumbness on me seems to fall. Oh, sweetheart, let me crave your grace. I fain would say your eyes of blue like violets to me up Appear, shy blossoms filled with heaven's dew that throw their sweetness far and near how tender are your lips of red how like a rose each velvet cheek how bright the gold upon your head all these sights say if i could speak how warm your blushes come and go oh how maidenly your rare and mean how pure the glances you bestow will be my valentine o oh queen the angels walking at your side methinks have lent their charms to you for in the world so big and wide there is not one so good and true if i had but the gift of speech your beauty and your grace to prove then might i find a way to reach your heart and all its wealth of love then sweetheart take the good intent truth has no need of phrases fine repay what long ago i lent and be today my valentine end of poem this recording is in the public domain jealous Sweetheart by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A step on the walk she's waiting to hear, waiting, waiting. There's a frown on her face, pouting, tis clear. Ah, someone is late in coming, I fear. All lovers are very fickle, my dear, waiting waiting only last week he was praising up nell praising praising saying her voice was clear as a bell thinking her fairer and who is to tell all that he said as they walked through the dell praising praising perhaps he is with her this summer night who knows who knows perhaps he is holding her hand so white Perhaps he is watching her eyes so bright. Perhaps he is wooing with all his might. Who knows? Who knows? Perhaps he is saying, I love you best. Who cares? Who cares? No need to carry a weight on one's breast. No need to worry and lose one's rest. Life is a comedy. Love is a jest. Who cares? Who cares? What if he has quite forgotten to keep old ways, old ways? There's a path where the silver moonbeams creep, and the tangled flowers have fallen asleep, and the dew is heavy, the clover deep. Old ways, old ways. He's not coming tonight, no need to wait. Ah, me, ah, me. Hark! the clock is chiming the hour of eight and once on a time he railed at the fate that kept him if only a half hour late ah me 
ah me but who comes here with a swinging stride ho 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 turns she away in her peak and pride turns she away till he says at her side there's but one for me in the world so wide ho 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 now in the blossoms the beaded dew slips sweetheart sweetheart someone is kissing to tremendous lips and there lingers no sign of the past eclipse down in the clover a drowsy bee sips sweetheart sweetheart end of poem this recording is in the public domain the day neil rode to mill by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c macleod of dare called his son to him macleod of dare looked morose and grim for he was sending on mission grave this son of his both handsome and brave and trembled thinking what if he make in his heedless youth a grave mistake twas not for country nor for the king nay twas a much more important thing than the church or state than feud or strife the mission was to search out a wife and young neil listened with scanty grace a look of impatience on his face while the old man told him where to go told him what to say and what to do on the morrow you'll gang a stay wi' your rich odd uncle ellen gray he ill gie ye the welcome o a son ye'll marry the daughter there's but one she's worth the winning for in her hand she hods the deed o all o his land she no weel favoured a homely maid but gild and proper grave unstayed but why should i wed a woman plain you didn't yourself macleod was vain he smiled well pleased and said true neil true but i was handsomer far nor you just court the maiden and never mind a squint or freckle since love is blind or ought to be in a case like this for tis na chance i had ye miss she's na a bra as her cousin kate but tis would janet i'd ha ye mate for kate pure lassie she has na land her face is her fortune understand she lives with janet who loves her much and fond o pictures and books and such gie her good day when you chance to meet but mind and your cousin janet greet wi warmer words and a gallant air go win ye a wife and a world o care neil listened closest to what was said of kate the penniless pretty maid and when at length he came to the place twas kate that in his eyes found grace while janet viewed him with conscious pride as one who would some day be his bride he stopped with them for many a day a favorite he of old allen gray they walked together over the hill and through the valley solemn and still the old man showed him acres wide that would go with janet as a bride then spoke of the cousin poor but fair the blue of her eyes her golden hair she hae no flocks and eh, she hae no land she hae no plenishing rich and grand but gin she stood in her scanty dress what man o meadow would love her less the youth's heart warmed to the logic old 
oh what worth was land what worth was gold what worth anything under the skies save the love-light in a lassie's eyes janet pestered him day after day did he walk out why she went that way did he come in to rest him a while she was waiting with beaming smile he never could get a step near kate janet was there like the hand of fate she was so cross-eyed that none could say whether or not she looked his way but one day it chanced that going to mill he overtook kate under the hill would she mount behind and ride along perhaps she would there was nothing wrong so he helped her up with trembling arm oh surely the day is close and warm Whoa, well, mare go study no need for haste when two soft arms are about his waist kneel shame on him pressed her finger-tips then turned he about and pressed her lips on the road the hawthorn blossom white scattered itself just in sheer delight a bird was singing a tender rhyme of meadow mate and the nesting time the hill looked beautiful in the glow that heaven flung on the world below ah me if that ride could last a week her gold hair blowing against his cheek as they rode to mill say the world wise nay rode in the lane of paradise travel that way though your hair grows white you never forget the journey quite next day neil went to the old home place and met his stern father face to face boldly enough he unfolded the tale though maybe his cheek was sometimes pale he would marry kate and her alone he had tried to care for the other one but she squinted so her hair was red and freckles over her face were spread in all the world there was none for him but his kate then laughed that old man grim your mither lad was a stubborn jade a stubborn and handsome dark-eyed maid and in a our battles she always won and neil you are just your mither's son but i haven't a live through a ma days and just learnt nothing heaven be praised hark now a gad to your uncle's home and bargain with him afore ye came as saw your kate and like to reel a look o oh, your mither i could spell in her bonny face a woman to win by ony means that's short o oh, sin say i tell it tim to let kate be the lassie pure an o oh, low degree as sort ye to understand that janet was owner o oh, the land why need i ye measle sick a task ye stiff-necked fellow ye needn't ask gin ye was coaxed ye wouldn't move you'd be too stubborn ta a fa in love like ye the campbells ye ha your way ye mother had hers money a day tis glad ye should be this day my word Tack time right now to thank the Lord. Your father's wisdom gave ye a bride, a plenty o' worldly gear besides. Ah, thankful enough was Neil that day. The joy leaped up in his eyes of grey, but not for his father's wisdom great, though maybe it had gotten him Kate. Not for the land and not for the gold, not for the flocks that slept in the fold thank heaven he said with a glow and thrill thank heaven for the day i rode to the mill end of poem this recording is in the public domain at joppa 
by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Perchance the day was fair as this. The eastern world is full of glow, with warmer sun and bluer sky, and richer bloom than we can show. At Joppa quaint beside the sea, when Simon Peter went to pray. I wonder if he did not pause a while to gaze on God's great book, to read on earth and sea and sky, the smile divine, the tender look. For when the hour of vision's given, the two worlds touch our earth and heaven. God teaches with a tenderness that we who follow him should learn hides not his glory when twill bliss eyes that look up and souls that yearn he sent the vision fair to see and spoke to peter on that day sleeping the voice fell on his ears i hear the bold peter say divine twill live and sound for evermore in this poor wayward heart of mine what god has cleansed so broad so free my narrow creed flees shamed away who would not be with peter now blue heaven above and earth below so near to god so far away from sin and wretchedness and woe before his eyes gone every doubt the glory of the skies spread out but hark men knock upon the door and voices call and not in vain for peter comes down to the earth and takes his life work up again down from the fullness to the need from god to man a change indeed we fain would on the housetop be we fain would hold communion sweet but looking up we never heed the work unfinished at our feet god give to us we humbly ask strength for the vision and the task end of poem this recording is in the public domain the world is growing old by jean blewett Song for LibriVox.org by Ezwa in Belgium in August 2017. I am so weary, master dear, so very weary of the road that I have travelled year by year, bearing a long life's heavy load. It is so long, it is so steep this highway leading to the skies and shadows now begin to creep and sleep lies heavy on my eyes i am so weary master dear so very weary of the road i pray i may be very near that snow-white city built of god where pain and heartache have not strayed where naught is known but peace and rest where thy dear hands have ready made a place for in the humblest guest but come thou closer master dear my weakness makes me sore dismayed oh let me whisper in thine ear for i am troubled and afraid what if my soul its way should miss between this and the world above and never share the perfect bliss provided by thy tender love but lo he speaketh at my side so close i feel his sheltering touch thou art my guest can harm be tied one call of me and known as such dear child the journey is not long thy heart need not to fear or shrink an opening door an angel song oh heaven is nearer than you think 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Dawn by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I cannot echo the old wish to die at morn as darkness strays. We have been glad together greeting some newborn and radiant days. The earth would hold me every day familiar things, would weigh me fast. The stir, the touch of morn, the bird that on swift wings goes flitting past. Some flower would lift to me its tender, tear-wet face and send its breath to whisper of the earth its beauty and its grace and combat death it would be light and i would see in thy dear eyes the sorrow grow love could i lift my own undimmed to paradise and leave thee so a thousand cords would hold me down to this low sphere when thou didst grieve ah should death come upon morn's rosy breast i fear i'd crave reprieve but when her gold all spent the sad day takes her flight when shadows creep then just to put my hand in thine and say good night and fall asleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain She by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A woman who knows how to droop her eyes before the world's bold gaze and teach by silence just how near that world dare venture to her ways. A woman who knows how to lift her eyes to mine without dismay. For innocence is might, and say that wrong is wrong alway, that right and truth are best alway. Eyes heaven lit and clear to night, I'll take, if for my own I may, the creed you hold, the right. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Two Marys by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. They journey sadly, slowly on, the day has scarce begun. Above the hills, the rose of dawn is heralding the sun while down in still gets him the shadows have not moved they go by loss oppressed to see the grave of one they loved the eyes of mary magdalene with heavy grief are filled the tender eyes that oft have seen the strife of passion stilled and never more that tender voice will whisper god forgives how can the earth at dawn rejoice since he no longer lives oh hours that were so full and sweet so free from doubts and fears when kneeling lowly at his feet she washed them with her tears with head low bowed upon her breast the other mary goes he sleeps she says and takes his rest untroubled by our woes 
and spices rare the hands do hold for him the loved and lost and magdalene by love made bold doth maybe bring the most it is not needed see the stone no longer keeps its place and on it sits a radiant one a light upon his face he is not here come near and look with thine own doubting eyes where once he lay the earth is shook and jesus did arise and now they turn to go away slow stepping hand in hand twas something wondrous he did say if they could understand the sun is flooding vale and hill blue shines the sky above all hail o voice that wakes a thrill familiar full of love from darkest night to brightest day from deep despair to bliss they to the master run straightway and kneel his feet to kiss o love that made him come to save to hang on calvary o mighty love that from the grave did lift and set him free sing mary magdalene sing forth with voice so sweet and strong sing till it thrills through all the earth the resurrection song end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mother's Lecture by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There's nothing, did you say, Reuben? There's nothing, nothing at all. There's nothing to thank the Lord for, this disappointing fall. For the frost it cut your corn down, right when twas looking best and then took half the garden the drought took all the rest the wheat was light as light could be not half a proper crop then the fire burned your fences and burned till it had to stop the cows were poor because the grass withered all up in the heat and cows are things that won't keep fat unless they have plenty to eat suppose the frost did take the corn and the cattle are not fat another harvest is coming you might thank the lord for that the fire that burned your fences down and laid your haystacks flat left the old house above your head you might thank the lord for that you've lost from field and barn and fold you've that word loss very pat but you've lost nothing from the home you might thank the lord for that and here is your mother at your side braiding a beautiful mat i'm old my boy but with you yet you might thank the lord for that your wife is a good and patient soul not given to worry or spat nice to see and pleasant to hear you might thank the lord for that here in the cradle at my side is something worth looking at she came this disappointing year you might thank the lord for that your boy is calling out daddy as hard as ever he can there's lots of folks would thank the lord for just such a bonny man ashamed of yourself a eh, reuben 
well i'd rather thought you'd be what going to keep thanksgiving in a matter good to see to kill the biggest gobbler that's strutting round the farm to give poor folks provisions and clothes to keep them warm you're going to help and comfort each sad old weight you find you're feeling so rich and thankful and heaven has been so kind ah uh, now my own boy reuben i'm so glad we've had this chat you're growing so like your father you might thank the lord for that end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c oh the frozen valley and frozen hill make a coffin wide and deep and the dead river lies all its laughter stilled within it fast asleep the trees that have played with the merry thing and freighted its breast with leaves give never a murmur or a sigh of woe they are dead no dead thing grieves no carol of love from a songbird's throat the world lies naked and still for all things tender and all things sweet have been touched by the gruesome chill not a flower a blue forget-me-not a wild rose or jessamine soft to lay its bloom on the dead river's lips that have kissed them all so oft but look a ladder is spanning the space twixt earth and the sky beyond a ladder of gold for the maid of grace the strong the subtle the fond spring with the warmth of her footsteps light and the breeze and the fragrant breath is coming to press her radiant face to that which is cold in death spring with a mantle made of the gold held close in a sunbeam's heart thrown over her shoulders bonny and bare see the sap in the great trees start where the hem of this flowing garment trails see the glow the color bright a stirring and spreading of something fair the dawn is chasing the night spring with all love and all dear delights pulsing in every vein the old earth knows her and thrills her touch as she claims her own again spring with the hyacinths filling her cap and the violet seeds in her hair with the crocus hiding its satin head in her bosom warm and fair spring with its daffodils at her feet and pansies a bloom in her eyes spring with enough of the god in herself to make the dead to arise for see as she bends o'er the coffin deep the frozen valley and hill the dead river stirs ah that lingering kiss is making its heart to thrill and then as she closer the closer leans it sips from its snowy shroud frightened a moment then rushing away calling and laughing aloud the hill where she rested is all a bloom the wood is green as of old and wakened birds are striving to send their songs to the gates of gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain rem and incenses by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There came a dash of snow last night, and for I went to bed. I somehow got to thinking bout that old place, Kettle Tread. I'm silly bout that spot of earth, though why I can't surmise, for it has got me in more scrapes and made me tell more lies. 
when me and you and taylor's boys were always in the spill a stealing off from work to go a coasting down that hill do you recollect how we used to stand and holler out like sin now one must pass that walnut stump afore the rest chips in and if one tumbled in the snow we only stopped to laugh and all the help we ever gave was aggravating chaff zip zip the frost and snow a picking at our face the wind just howling cuz it knowed twas beat fair in the race good gracious jim if i could stand a looking down that hill a watching you boys tumblin off and laughing at the spill and then grab up my noah's ark so clumsy and so wide and pull the rope and hold her back there let her go ker slide and see that glazy piece of ice a spanning that old crick and no i couldn't stop this slide if twas to save my neck now don't you get excited jim cuz i'm a talking so that would be awful foolish gosh just hear that north wind blow end of poem this recording is in the public domain Emile's Gift by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The city, girded by the mountain strong, still held the gold of sunset on its breast, when Emile, whose steps had journeyed long, stood at the gate with weariness oppressed. One came and stood beside him, called him son asked him the reason of his heavy air and why it was that now the day was done he entered not into the city fair answered he master i did come to find a man called jesus it is said he steals the darkness from the eyeballs of the blind the fever from the veins a even heals that wasting thing called sickness of the heart his voice they say doth make the lame to leap the evil tearing spirits to depart from nain there comes a tale doth make me weep of one a widow walking by the bier of her dead son and walking there alone and murmuring so that all who choose might hear a widow and he was my only one this jesus meeting her did not pass by but stopped beside the mourner for a space a wondrous light they say shone in his eye a wondrous tenderness upon his face and he did speak unto the dead young man i say arise these tears of mine will start the youth arose straight to his mother ran who wept for joy and clasped him to her heart within me master such a longing grew to look on him perchance to speak his name i started while the world was wet with dew a gift for him ah i have been to blame for when a beggar held a lean hand out for aid I laid in it, being moved, a goodly share of this same gift, and then a little maid. Lisp, she was hungry, in her eyes a prayer. I gave her all the fruit I plucked for him. His oil I gave to one who moaned with pain. His jar of wine to one whose sight waxed dim. O oh, master, I have journeyed here in vain within the city jesus walks the street or bids with friends or in the temple stands but shamed am i the nazarene to meet seeing i bring to him but empty hands the sun had long since sunk behind the hills the purple glory and the gleams of light had faded from the sky 
the dusk that stills a busy world was deepening into night son look on me the sweetness of the tone made amamil's heart begin to thrill and glow full well he said i know there is but one with simple words like these could move me so son look on me and lifting up his eyes he looked into jesus face and knew twas he knelt down and kissed his feet and would not rise because of love and deep humility up in the deep blue of the skies above were kindled all the watchfires of the night the voice of jesus deep and filled with love said come bid with me till the morning's light at dawn my beggar asked not alms in vain since dawn have i been debtor unto thee all day thy gifts within my heart have lain fruit oil and wine come through my poor to me End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Robin by Jean Bluett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. There's not a leaf on the vine where you swing, and the wind is chill and the sky is grey. But all undaunted you flutter and sing, Oh, the first of May, oh, the first of May. There's never a hint of yesterday's frost, Of the hunger and cold and waiting long. Never a plaint over what you have lost, Thrown into the notes of your happy song. The gladness is pressed in your bosom red, And the gloss is laid on your little head. I thank you for singing, Robin, today, for flaunting before me, jolly and bold, chirping. Oh, how oh, do you know it is May? Or are you so dull you have to be told? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Margot by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Now, Margot, Dina flout me, O oh, Dina, be unkind, mayhap to do without me, a hardship you would find. Ye hod your head too high, lass, ye hod your head too high what if i would pass by lass instead o oh, lingering die ye canna quite forget dear the sunny days o oh, your they haunt our twa lives yet dear the days that are no more when in the ward sea wide dear one lesson we could spell when it was of our pride dear to love each other well when riches had na found ye my maid o oh, tender face before your pride had bound ye and stolen a ah, your grace tis best that i should leave ye cold are your eyes o blue twas would be a sin to grieve ye a love say warm and true say put your hand within mine forget we can but try here's an kiss for odd lang syne and here's an for good-bye what is it that you say dear you will not let me go then ye maun bid me stay dear this much to me ye owe twas foolish things we were dear to dream that we could part the blind might almost see dear your image in my heart so haud me close and fast dear with arms so soft and white a fig for quarrels past dear you are my aim to-night end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Dreamland by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. With an angel flower laden, every day a little maiden sails away from off my bosom on a radiant sea of bliss i can see her drifting drifting hear the snowy wings uplifting as he woos her into dreamland with a kiss blissful hour my pretty sleeper whispering with thy angel keeper listening to the words he brings thee from a fairer world than this ah thy heart he is beguiling i can tell it by thy smiling as he woos thee into dreamland with a kiss could there come to weary mortals such a glimpse through golden portals would we not drift on forever toward that far-off land of peace would we not leave joys and sorrows glad to days and sad to morrows for the sound of white wings lifting for an angel's tender kiss end of poem this recording is in the public domain only a picture by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Something to show me, well, my lass. Make haste, I have no time to idle. These bright spring hours they seem to pass, like colts that fly from bit and bridle. A picture, well, if that is all, I can't, my child don't look so sorry. I'll come and see, although I call the whole thing only waste and worry but have your nonsense while you may your brushes paints and long-haired master they're pretty whims for you who see such beauty in a canvas plaster what's in a picture there's but one could win for me an hour's gazing it comes sometimes when day is done and dusk falls on the cattle grazing a big old house that fronts the sea the, the sunlight falling on the gables the wood what's this why can it be lass you have neatly turned the tables know it a eh, know each blade and stalk each sunny knoll each shady cover why every flower beside yon walk has had in me a fateful lover know it see yonder worn old step the open door the bench beside it the rose tree train where it should creep i almost see the hand that tied it the sunny windows seem to throw on me a tender look of greeting and in my heart awakens the glow of other days so glad and fleeting the dear old faces one by one come out from shadows swiftly thronging dear picture of my boyhood's home my eyes are dim with love and longing end of poem this recording is in the public domain Her Boy by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. There's a looking glass, a hammer, some toys all broken up. There's pebbles and glass and sawdust and Papa's shaving cup, a little cart with the wheels off, a horse that's lost an eye, a kitten tied to a chair leg that's looking scared and shy ah me the busy mother sighs i'm tired off my feet i really wish he were grown up so i could keep things neat he catches her reproving eye 
and is inclined for play so dons his bonnet wrong and cries by baby's going away the mother holds her darling close a culprit cute and small for wild disorder reigning there she does not care at all but spendthrift with a mother's love puts kisses on his lips and on the cheek so warm and red on neck and finger tips perhaps she thinks of coming years when in no childish play her boy shall bid her a good-bye her baby go away to walk without her tender care to shelter every move to stand without his hand in hers away from home and love i loves you bestest in the world he lisps with pretty wiles thank god he's but a baby yet the mother says and smiles end of poem this recording is in the public domain the indian girl by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c now to the missionary's home there came one autumn day a girl born in the arms of one so haggard worn and gray white man he said the fever burns my little sunbeam up not ask i for myself not bread nor water from a cup but give to her some healing thing i leave her in your care deal kindly with her one harsh touch will bring revenge beware ere they could answer yea or nay the old chief he had gone had vanished in the gloom of night which came so swiftly on they could not stay the hand of death its touch was on her brow o bearer of the message true here's one to listen now the indian maiden heard it all and looked with wondering eyes how sweet to her the story of life beyond the skies her eager throbbing heart drank in each precious promise given an indian girl a child of god heir to a throne in heaven the joyful tears crept to her eyes and down her dusky cheeks and all aglow with love and joy in her soft tongue she speaks now i will tell my father now i will tell him all that i have heard of jesus who hears us when we call he does not know of heaven how happy we will be when by and by the brother kind will bring him home to me when he sits down beside me he looks so stern and lone for i his child am dying his last and only one at twilight of another day he came erect and tall as though he would not bow his head though heavy blows may fall but soft the glance and tender he threw upon his child my little sunbeam in the dark he said in accents mild come closer o my father the indian maiden cried come closer while i tell you of one who loved and died that we may live together and never grieve in vain of one who suffered cruel blows to rescue us from pain her fevered hands crept into his his heart grew sick with fear the hour of parting and of grief was surely drawing near this child who shared his cup and couch his sunbeam in the night would go and never come again to gladden his dim sight no gold have i the old chief said but name the friend so good that i may prove an indian brave forgets not gratitude there in the silence of the night he heard the story old of christ's dear love for sinful man the sweetest ever told 
and when the sun came creeping up all glorious to the eye his haughty soul had learned to say it is not much to die it is but evening to a land whose shores are always green where never night comes darkly down where tears are never seen where heartbreak may not even touch where sorrow may not come but where the weary rest and say tis good to be at home end of poem this recording is in the public domain Some Joys We May Not Keep by Jean Blewett Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Something is lost to me, she said, that nevermore will be my very own. Something has swiftly slipped through my heart's door, and to the winds has flown. Loss was the kindest thing that fate could send some joys we may not keep and yet because this is the very end i needs said she must weep feeling my heart so empty and so chill there is no glow to-night no wakening of the old-time tender thrill no pulsing of delight when death hides from our eyes a much-loved face we let our tears fall fast, and then we take each sign, each lingering trace, and seal it up so past. And I must put the memories away, the toys love left behind, the sweets we shared upon a summer day, the kiss, the faith so blind. I was so rich, so proud a while ago, and now I am so poor. Oh, empty heart, there's nothing now to do but just to close the door. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Sunflower Time by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. In the farmhouse kitchen were Nan and John, with only the sunflowers looking on. Now a farmhouse kitchen is scarce the place for a knight or lady of courtly grace. But this was a common everyday pair that held the old kitchen this morning fair. A persistent and saucy thorn tree limb had sacrificed a part of the brim of the youth's straw hat so his face was brown save his well-shaped forehead which wore a frown and his boots were splashed with the mud and clay of the marshland pastures over the way where the alders tall and the spice wood grew and the frogs croaked noisily all night through neath the muslin curtains snowy and thin the big homely sunflowers nodded in. Nan was worth the watching, her gingham gown, had, it may be, old-fashioned grown, but it fitted the slender shape so well, was low at the neck where the soft lace fell. Of sleeves it had none, from the elbow down, while in length, well, you see, the maid had grown. A labor of love was her homely task, to share it no mortal need hope or ask. For Nan she was washing each trace of dirt, from fluted bodice and ruffled skirt. There are a few that will, and fewer that can, bend over a tub like our pretty Nan. As she took each piece from its frothy lair, the soap bubbles flying high in the air, and rubbed in a cruel yet tender way, till her curls were wet with the steam and spray, then wrung with her two hands, slender and strong, examined with care, and shook slowly and long, then flung in clear water to lie in state, 
each dainty piece met with the same hard fate there and she gave a look of conscious pride at the rinsing bucket so deep and wide then wiping the suds from each rounded arm she turned to the youth with a smile so warm i have kept you waiting excuse me please the soap suds just ruin such goods as these and you are so fond of finery nan nice dresses and fur bellows he began ah maybe i am of a truth she said and each sunflower nodded its golden head well ned brown's getting rich john's words came slow and he's loved you a long while as you know my house and my acres i held them fast was so stubborn over them to the last for when my father was carried forth and the men were asking what was he worth i knew that they said with a nod and a smile as they whispered together all the while tis a fine old homestead but mortgaged so what a foolish thing for a man to do and i said my father is dead and gone but he's left behind him a strong armed son and my heart was hot with a purpose set to pay off that mortgage to clear off that debt i've worked heaven knows it like any slave i've learned well the lesson of pinch and save i've kept a good horse but dressed like a clown i haven't a dollar to call my own oh i'm beaten well beaten yesterday everything went to ned brown from me my meadows my acres of tasseled corn the big orchard planted when i was born what i would have saved had i had the choice was my chestnut mare for she knows your voice so i'm only a beggar nan you see don't fancy i'm begging for sympathy you see for yourself that i don't care much thank god health's a thing the law can't touch why the happiest man i've ever knew was born a beggar and died one too and so wisely nodding each yellow head the sunflower they listened to what was said and nan in her careful and easy way in the old farmhouse kitchen that summer day set a great and mighty problem forth tell me the truth john how much am i worth the question has stood since the world began with adam alone and a lonesome man now the sunbeams kissing her golden hair her cheeks and her round arms dimpled and bare seem stamping a value of mighty wealth on youth and love and the bloom of health john looked and looked till his eyes grew dim then tilted the hat with the worthless brim to hide what he would not have her see you're 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 just worth the whole world nan said he then you are no beggar o oh, sweet bold nan you're the whole world richer than any man now a girl queen wearing a crown of gold did something like this so the tale is told but no royal prince that the world has seen ever felt quite so proud as john i ween as he clasped both her hands with new-born hope hands all crinkly with water and soap only the sunflowers now looking on so he kissed the maiden o foolish john as he hastened out through the garden gate ned brown was just coming to learn his fate he was riding a handsome chestnut mare but somehow our john didn't seem to care ned thought of the acres he'd won from john poor beggar he said and rode slowly on john thought of all he had won from ned oh you poor poor beggar was what he said why under the heavens smiling and blue only john and the yellow sunflowers knew
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. As it began to dawn by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Mary Magdalene, a coward heart I carry in my breast. Think you the soldier's stern will let us put these spices that we carry in his grave, or will they drive us hence? See how I start if but the breeze shakes on my head from limb or vine the heavy drops of dew art weary mary weary and afraid mary nay but so heavy-hearted and so lost to hope so full of horrors was that day so full of grief the memory of it all will weigh upon me till my life is done and if I close my eyes, I see in dreams his arms stretched out upon that cross so wide, his head, his kingly head, crowned with the thorns. Mary Magdalene Hush, Mary, or I drop upon the ground in weakness, my friend, my tender, and my faithful friend, when down thy forehead crept those crimson drops. The agony was more than I could bear. Tis said that Peter and the rest did sleep, did sleep and take their rest that last night in Gethsemane, leaving him there to keep his watch alone. Oh, poverty of love! Think, Mary, had we heard that sobbing prayer, could we have slept and our Lord sorrowful? Mary nay we would but have had one thought to share his grief to comfort and to cheer but man is dull at conning tasks of tenderness he is well qualified to guard with sword but not to keep long watches in the night his is the strength to fight ours is the strength to wait and waiting hold our faith in love they loved him well but being men they slept a loneliness grows on me as the dawn lights hill and valley and the fertile plain his feet have pressed the paths oft has he gone down this way to the gate oft has he sought the stillness and the quiet of that mount lifting his head to heaven mount Oliviet, and always will there be on cavalry the heavy shadow of a cross of wood and if a hardy flower blossomed there blood red its hue would be mary magdalene surely it shuddered as it felt his weight that heavy cross on which he hung till eve how could they plunge the spear into his side and mock at him with all their cruel tongues. O oh, Mary, when I think of his dear hands, that ever held out succor to the lost, that ever touched to heal the sons of men, that ever took the burden and the pain from heavy hearts, his strong and tender hands, that lifted up the fallen and the weak, that dwelt in blessing on the little ones, that broke the bread to feed a multitude, wounded and hurt, the sharp nails through each palm, my heart, it breaks with pity and with woe. Mary I wonder if he saw a standing there, so weak and helpless and so buffeted. One soldier pulled the covering from my head, another scoffed, O oh, woman, ye are fools, and yet another, look now at your king. I cared not, nay, was glad to feel that we, shared in his trial, feared not their contempt. I hope he saw us, that he understood, that love and faith were one with such as we. 
when he cried out i thought upon a day when he did come to rest himself with us the harvest fields were yellow and the sun beat down so fiercely that it hurt the head of ruth's fair little one the pain he cried the pain the pain with hot tears on his cheek and ruth did lift him up and run with him to where the master was who pushed the curls back with his hands and touched the forehead white the crying ceased the quiver left the eyes the pallor crept away from off the cheek he fell asleep a smiling healthy child mary magdalene and i thought of a day when he did meet a woman in her youth but lost to all the joys of innocence love she had known such love as leaves the life filled full of shame passion was hers hate and impurity the gnawing of remorse the longing vain to lose the mark of sin the scarlet flush a fallen womanhood the hatred of the spotless the desire that they might sink low in the mire as she oh what a soul she carried on that day the women drew their robes back from her touch men leered and little children seemed afraid to meet the devilish beauty of her form and face shunned and alone till one came to her side and took her hand in his and what he said is past the telling there are things the soul knows well but cannot blazon to the world and when he went his way upon her brow where shame had lain set the sweet word forgiveness and mary magdalene did follow him led by a wondrous love did wash his tender feet with grateful tears and wipe them with the soft hairs of her head mary joseph of arimatha laid his form in a new tomb i tremble as we come so near and tell me do you note a light fairer than dawn is cast on all things here behold one sits upon the stone robbed all in white a wondrous radiance on his face i fear and am perplexed let us go back mary magdalene nay we must put these spices in his grave my fears have gone and left me strong and bold let us advance and question him for he is some good angel keeping watch and ward it may be he has caused the heavy stone to roll away that we might enter in with love's last offering what doth he say mary he says that jesus is alive to-day and bids us come and see the empty grave oh what a joy if this were only true but tis too great a mystery come hence some one hath borne away our lord to wrest from us the sorrowful delight of looking on his face dead with the lines a mortal agony on brow and lips o oh, mary magdalene the world's strong hate might well have spread us this last cruel bow mary magdalene but it may be the angel tells us true and that he has arisen from the grave and is alive to love and keep his own o oh, blessed hope which all my being yearns to grasp and hold for if he is alive it means that you and i and all that love and hold their faith in him can never die mary i never understood what he did mean by life eternal so many things i had hid in my heart to ask him mary magdalene look how the sunshine sweeps down on the world 
there never was a yesterday so fair something within me answers to the glow and answers to the glad songs of the birds and something seems to call out sweet and clear the night is gone is gone the night is gone mary i am amazed the tears have quickly dried upon your cheek i thought your grief was strong too strong to lose itself in nature's smile the dazzling sunlight and the song of birds the fair mary magdalene hush tis our lord himself who comes this way the wounds made by the thorn still on his brow his hands and feet marked with the cruel nails mary it is the master and my fears are gone o oh, hark he speaks how often have we heard that voice so filled with peace and tenderness dear lord we fall and worship at thy feet mary magdalene o oh, risen son of god give me one hand pierced on the cross for me that i may place it on my heart and say for my transgression was he wounded sore bruised shamed and hurt for my iniquity mary we walked o master in a maze of doubt misgiving grief and great perplexity knowing not where to turn what to believe then through the tumult did we hear thee say all hail O words of cheer, O greeting glad. Mary Magdalene These words shall be a song, a song of joy, For a sad world to sing a glorious song, Of triumph and immortality. The glad notes shall ring clearly up to heaven, And echo down through hell. All hail, the Son of God hath left the grave and given us life all hail end of poem this recording is in the public domain her lesson by jean blewett read for librivox.org by alexandra selenius someone had told her that a sea nymph dwelt within a murmuring shell she called her own and she did love to hold it to her ear, and always she could catch the meaning of its song. When she was gay, the nymph, she thought, sang joyously. When she was sad at heart, the murmuring voice seemed full of plaints and tears. One day, when longing softly stirred her breast, she took the shell down to the shore and sat listening to all the things it had to tell till by and by so homesick grew the voice that called back to the waves when they did call a pity for its loneliness did make her suddenly resolved to set it free so with a stone she brake the shell in twain twas empty as the air who was it told her such a fair untruth a pretty lie a mist fell down upon the wooded hills and crept from hence out over all the sea her soft eyes caught it in their depth and held it prisoner till presently it grew too strong and subtle for the wide white lids which made but timid trembling sentinels and let it slip to liberty unchallenged the light unfeeling waves about her feet laughed at her grieving over such a thing laughed calling to her as they rushed and ran o oh, pretty little one that one bright day didst think thyself so wise didst count thyself so rich o oh, foolish foolish child to weep and break thy little heart over something that is not has never been save in thy thought End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Until We Meet by Jean Blewett. 
Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Dear one who crossed the borderland into a world of love and song, one of the tender white robe band to whom eternal joys belong thy memory lives within my heart will live until thy face i see the two worlds lie not far apart i soon will be at home with thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain his care by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c gracious the sceptre that he wields heart do you understand all all is his his great arm shields that which is bare and that which yields lord is he of the harvest fields and of the barren land end of poem this recording is in the public domain with her sunshine breeze and dew by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c joyous may have come again with her sunshine breeze and dew holding up her silken train see the blossoms sweet and new here a yellow primrose shows all the world a heart of gold there a scarlet tulip grows by the breeze made over bold joyous may we welcome you welcome you and all you bring skies so shining and so blue birds to twitter and to sing children on the green to play blushing maid and eager swain at your coming joyous may all the world grows young again end of poem this recording is in the public domain what the poppy said by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c we have to-day so the poppy said to the west wind softly blowing to-day to hold in our bosom red the great white tears that the night has shed and the sunbeams warm and glowing we have to-day said the lover bold to spell out the sweet old story my heart for thine and the tale is told oh be not sweetheart so shy and cold see the world is filled with glory the west wind sighed to the sea that night tis a thought to give one sorrow the poppy boasts of her pearls of white the lover his store of dear delight but neither whispers to-morrow end of poem this recording is in the public domain eve by Jane Bluett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. She is an ideal daughter, mind you, friend. You must not from my words infer she has no faults. No angel is my Eve, not she, but just a faulty fair thing, sweet of face and warm of heart and with a tender flame in her true eyes so innocent of gill with laughter on her lips and loving words with something in each mood to draw one soul the closer to her wondrous big her nature is she's something more than kind if sorrow touches me in any way it is to her i turn for comforting if sickness stretches me upon my bed and steals my strength and spirits quiet away i want her near me with her slim cool hands 
her zeal to nurse me back to health again her soothing of the pillows underneath my head that i may rest the easier to her this world is such a pretty place she likes no one to leave it er he must so plies her remedies with wondrous skill and talks the while of pleasant homely things the tasks that tarry for my getting well the garden showing plainly my neglect the swarming bees the apple trees in bloom the lonesome collie blinking in the sun the filly being broken for the plough my southdown sheep the green of barley fields my neighbors and the daily wish that i might soon be out among them as of old this is the sort of nurse a sick man needs not one who is forever breathing sighs and talking of the emptiness of life and urging one to wean his thoughts from earth nor care a jot for life since it is such an empty barren disappointing thing life why tis god's good gift to each of us and some i think show much ingratitude by slurring it forever with the wish that they were rid of it for good and all now you have mortgages and deeds and bonds you have a lordly mansion of your own while i i have a big old-fashioned house and a few fields you sometimes look at me and sigh to think i am not better off in this world's goods old friend i like you well and would not have you waste your pity so why man i'm all amazed that you are not quite envious of me since i have got what you do lack a daughter of my own it makes a man feel rich to have a girl like mine to pet and make ado of him to come about him with her tender ways and cozying and pretty tricks of speech to cry a little when he goes away to watch for his return with eager eyes to come to him with laughter on her lips a and sometimes a pout that shows itself but to be kissed away to keep his heart from growing old with all the years that pass i would not give this little eve of mine for twenty times her weight in solid gold tis a good world you do not wonder now that i am so jolly and content all way you're sighing like a furnace tis too bad i wish old friend you were as rich as i with such a glad young thing to come and lay her rosy cheek to yours when you are sad the man who has no daughter of his own is such a pauper i could cry for him end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ring Out Glad Song by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A perfect joy, the sages say, is more contagious than a grief. A joy exceeding all belief is reigning in the world today. Joy, see it spread on every side, the sea girt isles so grand and proud joy hear it pain sweet and loud go swelling swelling far and wide it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria old england warms now through and through the rugged thing is full of love and pregnant with the thoughts that move the great soul of a nation true whom god's hand hath been leading on 
through all the centuries dim and gray from ages dark to dusk of dawn and then to full and perfect day it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria and green-clad erin lifts her voice full sweet the words ring on her tongue she will be always fair and young and always ready to rejoice the locks the streams the granite hills of bonnie scotland are aglow stronghold of loyalty you know and to the sky the paean thrills it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria east west north south it seems to float and pulses stir and memories wake for god and mary england's sake how oft has rung that battle note but ah a grander measure moves this glad old world of ours to-day rings through the wilds through palm tree groves and rugged north lands far away it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria rings through the solitudes so lone through places all aglow with bloom through dim waste tracks where lurks the gloom from southern shores to arctic zone o mighty empire stretching far on solid grand foundations laid in love with peace yet not afraid to meet if needs grim visaged war it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria australia hears it as she stands fanned by the sea winds all around and sends a voice to swell the sound from fertile fields and pasture lands in canada blest spot of earth joy revels on this perfect day and all aflame with pride of birth she sings out in her lusty way it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria the shadows long ago have fled her song goes ringing clear and sweet from the atlantic at her feet to the pacific at her head from meadow wide from forest tall from hilltop high and valley deep from rapids with their whirling sweep from river lake and waterfall it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria o queen we could not give thee less well hast thou earned by noble thought by noble deeds thy hand hath wrought our homage and our tenderness thy mother heart must thrill and move to note the gladness of the time hear thy name sung in every clime by voices solemn sweet with love it is the year of jubilee ring out glad song o'er land and sea god save our good victoria end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the conservatory by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c we came out of the dusk and gloom into the glowing fragrant room walled in and carpeted with bloom a merry group we made that day our laughter rang out clear and gay for we were young and it was may my cousin dora walked with me late from her home across the sea and fair as any flower was she each pansy lifted up its face the slim fern shook her gown of lace a glory spread through all the place 
my lady lily's waxen bell bent down ashamed to hear us tell how sweet her color and her smell the palms stood up like courtiers tall the smilax crept along the wall a sunbeam stole and kissed it all now dora we shall see i said the persian violet lift her head blaze out in purple and in red the people seek her eagerly a rare aristocrat is she proud of her fame as proud can be so many tongues her praises sing said dora through the world they ring she looks a heartless haughty thing her country cousins sweet and shy they get their color from the sky are fairer than herself said i and last of all we came to where the lilac and the primrose fair their breath threw on the heavy air my cousin slipped the rose between where yellow blossoms made us green of their own foliage thick and green ah this she said is a surprise an english primrose soft her eyes mark what a beauty in it lies o oh, primroses in careless tone said nell i've often seen them grown much prettier than this small pale one my cousin bent her soft white cheek against the blossoms pale and meek and still she stood and did not speak i think a tear or two she shed er lifted was the golden head poor little homesick flowers she said i wonder do you droop and dream of fleecy cloud and sunny gleam of meadow wide and laughing stream i wonder if you wait to hear the children's voices shrill and clear sweet homesickness is hard to bear then gave us all a half-shamed look ah i could read her like a book her heart was in some old world nook it wants to feel she said the touch of dew and sunlight and all such of wind that fondles over much but by and by it will get bold and show you people all the gold its pretty heart does surely hold back at my side she took her place and looking at her i could trace and added sweetness in her face we came into the dusk and gloom out of the glowing fragrant room walled in and carpeted with bloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain e bud by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c did the angel pluck thee my blossom fair ere the morning sun had spent its glow while the dew of heaven lay bright and clear in each folded leaf ah the angels know they gather our sweetest our heart's delight to bloom where there cometh no frost nor blight End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Envy by Jean Blewett. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When Satan sends to vex the mind of man and urge him on to meanness and to wrong, his satellites there is not one that can acquit itself like envy not so strong as lust so quick as fear so big as hate a pygmy thing the twin of sordid greed its work all noble things to underrate decry fair face fair form fair thought fair deed a sneer it has for what is highest best for love's soft voice and virtue's robe of white truth is not true 
and pity is not kind a great task done is but a pastime light tormented and tormenting is the mind that grants to envy room to make its nest end of poem this recording is in the public domain a fancied lost by jean blewett read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c if some day in your heart is born the thought that one held dear is careless of the gift of tenderness so fully freely given i pray you friend to strangle it at birth there are no losses half so real to us as losses which are not have never been a friendship gone we say and drop a tear for wasted faith and love and loyalty when if we did but know the simple truth the gladness in these foolish hearts of ours the gladness and the full content would leave no room for sadness and no place for doubt end of poem this recording is in the public domain how close by jean blewett sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. How close will Jesus come to thee, so close thine eyes can trace the wondrous love he has for thee upon his shining face how close will jesus come to thee so close that thou canst feel the sense of safety that he brings oh all thy being still how close will jesus come to thee so close that thou canst hear the whisper of his tender voice ring softly on thine ear how close will jesus come to thee so close that doubts will cease thy soul with sorrow wait and sing find healing joy and peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the wood by jean blewett read for librivox org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. To me there comes a time in leafy June When nature calls from wood and stream and field Calls low at dawn, calls loud and clear at noon Calls most persuasively when stars come out Up in the blue and other voices hush And come, I hear her say come out with me come leave the low cramped rooms the weary task come take the path through meadow and through wood climb up the breezy hills and look abroad climb down into the valleys deep and wide and rest a space there is no rest so full as that which i will give you as you lie on grassy knoll i'll give for lullaby the rustle of the leaves tossed by the wind for covering the sunbeams meshed and snared by waving boughs i'll fill your lungs with air made fragrant in the bowers i call my own 
come come i'll keep you company i have a potion brewed a wondrous healing thing which brings forgetfulness of lurking care and rubs out from the mind the memory of loss of striving and defeat come come i went i left the city far behind i went because she called my fair first love i went at sunrise that for one full day i might be with her thrill beneath her touch as in the long ago when she did claim the full affection of my untried youth o oh, freshness living freshness of a day in june spring scarce has gotten out of sight and not a stain of wear shows on the grass beneath our feet and not a dead leaf calls our day of loveliness is past and gone i found the thick wood steeped in pleasant smells the dainty ferns hid in their sheltered nooks the wild flowers found the sunlight where they stood and some hid their white faces quite away while others lifted up their starry eyes and seemed right glad to ruffle in the breeze i reveled in the grandeur and the strength of towering trunks and great wide spreading limbs i reveled in the silence far away a noisy world i knew was waiting me but no sound from it reached me as i went by tangled pathway through that wilderness at noon i came out to the fields sat down and ate my lunch with hearty appetite just at the foot of a wide hill which hid the highway quite from sight and shut me in a meadow stretched itself out in the sun each little blade of green did thrust its face up to the glow the clover heads bent down to let their visitors the bees pass out the heavy-footed honey-bees ah fond are they of the sweet juices stored in fragrant phials so fond that in the breeze they smell them out and straightway sally forth to taste the same and carry samples home down in the grass a thousand insects hummed a shallow stream laughed in the sunshine speeding o'er the stones to find the coolness of the shady wood the cattle laid their wide mouths to its breast and slaked their thirst and made their dappled sides swell out then lowering forth their full content they turned again to wade through knee-deep grass from off her four warm eggs of mottled shade a bird flew with a call of love and joy that drew from her proved mate perched on a bough too slight to hold him and his weight of song an answering note replete with tenderness that sent the echo of its sweetness on into the dim old wood a wild rose spread its greenness o'er a corner of the fence and hung its tinted blossoms out to grace the lowly spot and make of it a bower but fairer than the meadow or the wood than wild rose blooming by the zigzag fence than nesting bird or softly murmuring stream than cattle standing knee-deep in the grass than dew-washed fern or golden-hearted flowers fairer than sunbeams mesh or dappled shade or aught that i had seen this day of days was she the glad young thing whose buoyant feet trod the slim path which wound its chainful way down the tall hill past alders all abloom a girl a young girl is a gracious sight a thing to make the eye light gaily up we see our youth in her 
the joy of youth smiles out at us from her white lidded eyes the careless grace of youth is on her lips the innocence of youth shines on her brow the prettiness of youth is on her cheek her softness is the softness of a flower her brightness and her beauty have the fresh and healthy glow of morn her laughter stirs a host of memories sleeping in our heart and makes a pleasant hour of some far off some dear and half forgotten yesterday i wonder if the day will ever come when we will be so old so old and dull that we will listen to yet never heed the sweetest sound of all the sounds which ring out through this world's big aisles the rippling laugh which comes from red young lips comes straight from some rich storehouse in the breast a storehouse filled with gladness great and hope and all things good she stopped to pluck a bouquet for her gown from the sweet briar that nodded in the sun and pleasantly i heard a little o oh, of pain that hand of hers the briar in greed had caught and held so closely that its mark show plainly on the warm and pink palm thing but she did pluck it and its fragrance found a place among the white folds at her neck and in the silken girdle which did creep about the rounded slimness of her waist then down she sat to rest her for a while and i could hear her crooning to herself o oh, sweet briar growing all alone in shady lonesome places by all but sun and dew unknown how full you are of graces o oh, sweet briar with your fragrance rare you woo me to come nigh you your breath so fills the heavy air i cannot well pass by you o oh, sweet briar growing by the brook the sleek fat cattle wade in say will you share your cozy nook with me a happy maiden o oh, sweet briar do the dewdrops fall and make your soft leaves glisten o oh, sweet briar does the west wind call and do you wait and listen end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lac de Sheen by Jean Blewett, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, pretty, shallow, mimic lake, hedged in by rushes and wild rice, why is it that the wind can wake and make you angry in a trice? You were so peaceful and so still before the wind crept round the hill the roistering mischievous wind that stooped and kissed you as you lay in sunshine steeped all bland and kind then racing went away away to stir the languor of the wood and make its mutterings understood and you o oh pretty shallow lake must needs get ruffled and perplexed he kissed and fled now wide awake you are at once and cross and vexed lift your soft arms and let them fall there is no stillness now at all i think the pain of it is not that it crept down to wake and kiss and give attentions all unsought i think the pain of it is this on your warm breast it did not stay it kissed and then raced far away you are so jealous you must cry and toss about in much unrest the rushes bend the white gulls fly in this wild mood i like you best you were too peaceful and too still 
before the wind crept round the hill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Deserted by Jean Blewett, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. She stood that night with a face so sad, so filled with bitterness and despair. Closing my eyes, I can see her yet, sorrowful, broken, but passing fair. Her eyes were fixed on the sky above, where stars were shining so soft and clear. Did the ghosts of innocence and love steal out of the gloom and stand quite near, so young, to quiver beneath such smart? A fairer brow twould be hard to find the pity of it a broken heart and childhood lying so close behind i heard her whisper twas long ago that i laughed for joy at the touch of morn kneel down and prayed in the light and glow ah me i cry now tempest torn thank god for night and the world asleep there rise peace through me the long long day thank god for the darkness so that folds me and hides me quite away end of poem this recording is in the public domain my neighbor by jean blewett read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc Say not, I love the Lord, unless you find, Within you, welling up by day and night, A love strong, full, and deep for humankind, Unless you find it always a delight, To show the weary one a resting place, To show the doubting one's faith shining way, To show the erring one the door of grace, to show the sorrowing one where they may lay their broken hearts the heaviness the care the grief the agony too sharp to bear when each man is the neighbor whom we love according to the gracious measure of his word then may we lift our eyes to heaven above and say with rapture sweet i love the lord End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.